Are you looking for a pro sim racing setup without breaking the bank? Well, look no further. This is the Camus C5 direct drive wheel. Hey everyone, my name's Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. This wheel right here is very budget friendly and you can get it all for just under $300. Minus this little piece right here. This is just the desk mount or if you have a rig set up already, then you don't need to purchase this. These two items right here come bundled together for just $300. So let me start by showing you everything that comes inside the box and then we're gonna go ahead and get it set up on the PC behind me and we'll put all the features that comes within this to the test. We'll start Start off with the pedals so this is everything that comes inside the box you have the brake and the accelerator which is clearly labeled on the front of them we have the base plate some rubber feet and the actual pedals themselves we have some cables and screws that are required to put this all together and once it is together it looks a little something like this and that's all set up so the pedals are in brake and accelerator there's six screws that's all that it takes to pop this in and you have some rubber feet as well if you want to go ahead and put that if this is going on a hardwood floor of some sort. The actual base itself is very heavy, so there's a bit of weight to it, so it's not gonna move around very easily. And there are some holes on there if you want to mount it to an existing sim rig. Next, we take a look at the desk mount just here. Now, there are a number of screws in here. You can probably see with the amount of parts that are in here. So let's go ahead and put this together. And just with the power of time, that is all put together and ready to go. So we have a few different options on the side. I will go through this as we're mounting this, but a few different options to adjust the, the height of the steering wheel. And also you've got adjustable clips. Uh, to clamp to your desk. So again, we'll go through this on the mounting option. Then we move on to the best part, which is the actual steering wheel itself. Now, this does come with a little bit of weight, so I'm expecting the steering wheel to be fairly decent. And also keep in mind the direct drive motor is built into the steering wheel as well. So let's jump in and have a look. So this is the steering wheel itself. And yes, as I expected, there is a fair amount of weight to this because Again, as I mentioned, at the back is the motor itself. That's the wheel. It has a nice carbon fiber on the front with a load of buttons on here. Again, we'll look at this in more detail when we come to mounting it. And then also there's some additional bits inside here. So we have a power cable, which will need to power the steering wheel itself. We have the mounting brackets that we're gonna need to mount this to the desk mount itself. Uh, there's some stickers. So if you wanna stick some stickers on there, you are welcome to do so with them. And then we have the screws inside here that we're gonna need a screwdriver and the main power pack itself. So one thing I will tell you to do before you go ahead and set the desk mount up, there is a fan in here that you need to install on the desk mount as well. So we'll go ahead and install that and get that ready and get it all plugged in, ready to be set up. Now we have it all unboxed. The next thing is to get this fully mounted on here. So these were the two brackets that I finished attaching to the steering wheel and we're ready to mount at the desk now. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually move the desk mat out of the way, just push it back a little bit so there's enough room to get this on. So once that's gone back, you get this mounted to where you want it. You wanna to align to the middle of the screen just to make sure you are in the center of your field of view. And then we go ahead and tighten the two screws at the bottom just here. And you wanna make sure that's not going anywhere. Now, the final bit to this is actually mounting the steering wheel. So on the back, there's four screws. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those in here. And we have the screws for those already. And there's three different cables that you need to connect. So there is a DC input, which is the power. We have the USB cable to connect to the computer. Also, we have the fan that we installed at the back. This little connector just here goes straight in the back of this here. So if I just show you on the front here where the fan goes in, that goes in just at the bottom, this point just here. If you have a pedal or handbrake shifter, there's also a couple of USB-C options down here to get those connected into there as well. With the screws you had left earlier then, so we can go ahead and get this mounted. So pop this on, like so, and then we can go ahead and use the four screws. There we go, that's now mounted on there and that isn't going anywhere. So it's fairly solidly on there. So these are the cables that we spoke about earlier that we need to get put in. So you can go ahead and feed it from behind. We have the USB for the brake, which goes into the back. For now, I'm gonna sling it under the desk, but you obviously want to cable tidy this properly. We have USB A to USB B. And what you want to do with this is go from the back of your steering wheel to the back of the computer. So I'm just, again, gonna put this across the desk for the sake of this demonstration. And then we have the power cable cable as well. And this is just to give you a closer look of what it looks like once all the cables are plugged in from the back. And for the first time, let's press the power button at the back. 
There you go, you can see that's turned on. Now we have the Camus wheel set up right here and we're going to go ahead and have a look at the software that's available on the screen. So this is the software that you get with the Camus wheel which allows you to change the parameters that you might need. So let's take a quick look. So we have the parameters and within here you have all these various options down here. So you can change the power, the natural dampening, the friction. So you can really make this as lifelike as you want to a real scenario. We then have game effects and any assistance that you might need also as well. So there's some temperature thresholds down here. So obviously you don't want your steering to overheat. So that is also there. You can create profiles for all the different games you have. So if you play, for example, Forza or Assetto Corsa or even F1 23, you can go ahead and have different profiles for depending on what you're playing. Now within here is where you can set the steering wheel itself. So we're moving this. You can, you can see that moving on the screen also as well. So you can set the maximum steering angle, so 720, it's just the amount of turns that you want it to do. So depending on how comfortable you are, and each of these buttons on the front have different availability, so you can set them to different things that you would wanna do within the gameplay. Uh, for example, something like changing the camera angle of the car, you can go ahead and set different buttons accordingly. Now this just shows you the buttons on here, but you can do it within the racing software as well. For the pedals, you can set your maximum and minimum. This comes from a very light touch, so you can set the maximum right here and without touching them, they're the maximum. So any pressure on them at all. And you can see that's now working and whatever light touch you have on them will be affected within the game. One final thing to show you is the updates. So do make sure you keep an eye on the firmware updates and keep them up to date. So these are all up to date at the moment. So they've got all the latest and greatest. So let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay and see how this works. So let's start with playing Forza Horizon 5. So within here, we can set up the, the settings. There is a bit of fiddling around to get this initially working. You need to install all Joy and run some emulation software to get this working. Uh, I don't think this is the only software you need to do this with. I think this happens with other games as well, but not all of them. So we have this set up now uh, and let's go back now. You can see straight away, we're straight in and we can drive around like we would a normal car. Uh, that's not a great start, but we'll keep going anyway. So you can really feel on the wheel itself, you can feel a bit of feedback that you're getting. It does feel a little bit different than obviously driving uh, a normal wheel, which I was using the G920 before. So it does feel that little bit different and I can feel the feedback on here. And I know if I'm turning the corner, I can feel the vibrations that are coming through to give me the feel that I'm actually turning the car at a higher speed, which is really good. To actually hold the steering wheel itself, it feels quite rugged and it feels quite secure in terms of holding it. The desk clamp is great. It's doing a great job in terms of holding it into place. Uh, again, not the, the best thing to do. Now the wheel rim itself does feel quite premium. So it does feel like this is a nice leather stitching. It doesn't feel like it's gonna wear after a long time of being used. So overall, I'm actually quite impressed with this wheel in terms of how it runs. Just to give it an extra test, let's go ahead and test it in Assetto Corsa because I think we'll get a bit more feedback in there because it's what, it actually runs natively without any additional software. So let's go ahead and give that a test. We're testing out now in Assetto Corsa. So I have to say the wheel definitely feels a lot better within this program. So if you're playing this game, this wheel is actually really good. You can really feel the feedback as you're drifting around. You can see that's moving automatically in accordance to how a wheel really would move. The only thing I have to say about the steering wheel, it feels great, but these paddle shifters are a little bit on the small side. I would hope they would be a bit bigger, but if you are a serious racer, you would probably have a gearbox anyway, and also a handbrake as well, just to add to the experience. But as an entry level, this is really good. There you go, you can see that just there. So, okay, that spun out completely there. But you can see you have control over, and it is very much lifelike in terms of how you're playing this game. So I am actually genuinely impressed from this. Coming from a Logitech wheel, this is definitely a massive upgrade. In terms of the pedals, I would have to say there's a spring within them, so you have the start, the brake, the accelerator, but there isn't any adjustment, so there's one level. So if you wanted the accelerator to be a bit harder, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. It is set as it is. And that's definitely not how to drive. But overall, like I said, I'm really impressed with this wheel. I did have the lights working on here earlier where you can see the gear changes, but it seems to have stopped working at the moment. I'm not sure what the reason is for that, but I'll show you that on a quick clip on a B-roll so you can see how that works. And the last final bit that I wanna show you to show the realism of this is when you do go off the course, you can feel the steering wheel vibrating. 
So as if you are on a bumpy ground, so your steering wheel's going up and down almost. So you can't really see it in this area. But if I just skip around this corner here, you can hear that. You can see that steering wheel bumping up and down as it is vibrating. So again, giving that lifelike feel to how you would be driving inside of a car in the real world. I really like this wheel and it's a great upgrade to my setup. Going from Logitech to the Camus, you can really feel the direct drive motor in there and it gives you the real lifelike experience. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, what you think of this wheel, whether it's something you would add to your setup or even what you have in your setup at the moment. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.